Democrats flipped 40 congressional seats on their way to a House majority in the 2018 midterms, including the small blue wave that swept over four of the GOP-held districts in the state of New Jersey. Joining us now is the Democrat who unseated five-term incumbent Republican Leonard Lance in the race for New Jersey's 7th congressional district, a former U.S. State Department official under President Obama, Congress Congressman-elect Tom Malinowski. Welcome to the show. Good to have you with Thank us you. today. So tell us what the priorities will be. Will, will the top priorities be to, to take on Trump or to try and find some way, some middle ground to get bills passed? Yeah, I, I think in the next few weeks you're going to see chaos in the White House and a disciplined mm -hmm. focus in the House of Representatives on getting legislation passed. That's our job. We're going to fiercely defend the Mueller investigation, the Justice Department and the FBI so they can do their job. We're going to focus on health care, on gun safety, on infrastructure. Those are the issues that the voters uh, are demanding that we uh, get stuff done on. So it seems that some of the bills, though, allow Trump to be challenged. So it, it, a parallel track. Well, I think the challenge to Trump is that we're going to be actually responding to what the voters are demanding their government work on. Um, we have this decision out of Texas, which puts health care right back uh, on the front pages of the national agenda. Uh, Republicans have been saying for, for months that they support protection for pre-existing conditions, that they support the so-called popular parts of the Affordable Care Act. We're going to give them a chance to prove it in the next few weeks by proposing legislation that at least had bipartisan support last year to shore up the Affordable Care Act. We're going to pass universal background checks, which the vast majority of even gun owners in America want to see. We're going to pass bills on government ethics and integrity protecting our democracy. All of this is going to be a test, uh, I think, more for Republicans in the Senate than for Donald Trump. We're going to see if we can get some things done and send them to his desk uh, and try to contain the chaos from the White House. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll send it to Casey Hunt for the next question. Casey. Congressman Elect, good to see you this morning. Uh, there's a new report out in Politico this morning that Nancy Pelosi seems to be succeeding in convincing some of the more progressive members of the incoming Democratic <coughs> caucus that trying to go to impeachment right away is not the best strategy. Do you think that is happening? Are leaders succeeding in convincing some of the loudest voices uh, that are pushing for impeachment to hold off and wait until Mueller's findings come out? Well, I, I hope so. And, and look, I am beside myself over what happened in 2016. And, and we now know that President Trump was doing real estate deals with the Russians, even as they were helping him win an election. But I think we also know that in America, if it ever comes to impeachment of this president or any future president, it's got to be seen as the patriotic thing to do and not the partisan thing to do. So the first thing is we have to defend the institutions that are conducting this investigation. We have to see what, they, what information they deliver to the Congress and to the American people. And at that point, we'll do the right thing. We'll do the right thing for the country and for the Constitution. But for now, let's focus on doing our jobs on health care, infrastructure, taxes, the issues that voters send us to Washington to do something about. All right, we're going to send it to our two New Jersey residents, Noah Rothman and Eddie Glaude. Noah. <laughs> Congressman, you talked about how the Democrats in the House want to shore up the Affordable Care Act, preserve it uh, against Republican assaults. Uh, but it seems to me that we really have a, just an illust illustration in that law about how irresponsible Congress has been with regard to funding it. There are very few funding mechanisms now that are implemented, and we're starting to repeal some, the Cadillac tax, the employer mandate, and now we're talking about taking the penalty away from the individual mandate, uh, which allows allowed this website or this website this uh, 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 lawsuit to go forward at what point do we say okay we need to pass something like we have in New Jersey now an individual mandate that funds <coughs> these laws and makes them sustainable in the future well you're, you're answering your own question you know the judge in Texas was wrong on the law but he actually had a point about the individual mandate being key to this law and we've taken care of that in New Jersey we restored an individual mandate and you know what the result is Insurance premiums for New Jersey voter for citizens this year are down 9%, $1,500 per family for people in the unsubsidized uh, marketplace. Do you think the American people would like to see a $1,500 
uh, decline in their health care premiums. We've got a chance to give them that if we do for the country what New Jersey just did. Is that how they're going to pitch it? They're going to say, we're going to bring your, your, your premiums down, not that we're going to reimpose a tax. The, the cost of health care is the number one issue facing the American people in this country. It's bankrupting America. Premiums have been rising. That's the, the reason for this revolt in the suburbs, or one of the main reasons for the revolt against the Republican Party. The Affordable Care Act took one step down the road of dealing with that question, including with a mandate. We, we've got to shore it up, and we've got to think about the next steps. Two-part question. What Eddie. about uh, Pelosi, Leader Pelosi's uh, following up on Casey's uh, question about uh, Leader Pelosi and, and the more progressive part of the incoming class? Uh, what, are your, what is your position around the New Green Deal uh, that folks like Alexand Alexandra uh, Cortez is, is putting forward? What, what do you think about that? And then the second question uh, is about New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, here we are in a moment where we're worried about what's happened in North Carolina, what's happened in Wisconsin and Michigan, and then you have New Jersey Democrats talking about redistricting. What is your position? I mean, obviously it was stopped, but give us a sense of the insider game there. Uh, well, let's take the first question <laughs> first. Uh, I, I think we, we got to do something about climate change. And, and this is not a partisan issue. This is about, about protecting our planet. And so I, I support the idea of having a select committee over the next two years to debate and propose some of the fundamental steps we're going to have to take to deal with that. Uh, the, the, the Green New Deal, as I understand it, is about a lot more than that. It's about single-payer health care. It's about guaranteeing jobs for every American. Mm -hmm. I really worry that if we try to enact the entire progressive agenda, in one fell swoop, we're going to enact nothing, and we're not going to do anything about climate change. I think we got to be realistic about that. On redistricting, um, we as Democrats, and I think patriotic Americans, are fighting partisan redistricting all around the country, in Wisconsin, in Michigan, in North Carolina. The last thing we need is, the last thing we needed was for New Jersey to move us in the opposite direction, and I'm glad to say the Democrats, progressives, Republicans in New Jersey came together to say that that redistricting plan was a mistake. I, I think we now have the moral high ground to continue this fight to protect our democracy around the country. Congressman-elect Tom Malinowski, thank you very much for being on the show this morning. And coming up, we'll talk to Pulitzer Prize-winning author and New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman. Morning Joe is coming right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.